Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Well, Colin, we've been looking at this whole subject of authority for the past couple of weeks now. And uh, yesterday you were talking about our response as Christians to secular government and the authorities under which we live. There's... uh, a lot to say on this whole matter, and I guess it comes down to a matter of the heart. It does, but I think also we see the need for there to be a Christian witness in every strata area of our society. We need a strong Christian witness in government. Now, there are a certain number of Christians in government, um, and some of them do a great work behind the scenes. And we need more. We need a greater Christian witness in government at all levels, Westminster local government as well. Um, but we need men and women of real authority who will be listened to because, you see, the more we are submitted to God's authority, the greater the authority with which we can speak and act. Many Christians are afraid of politics, are getting involved in politics. They would avoid that like the plague, but well, you're encouraging people. Well, I, yes, if, if that is the particular way in which God wants to use people. But we need Christians in sport, Christians in entertainment, and there are a number of those, and there are organizations which promote the gospel within those areas. Um, we need them to be witnesses. We we need, um, uh, unfortunately, there are so many famous people who it gets paraded around have become Christians. And within a relatively short period of time, many of them, I won't say all of them, but many of them are just back in ungodly lifestyles. Um, that is probably due to the pressures that they're under. Um, uh, but of course, anybody who does have a high public profile is a prime target for the enemy because he knows that they could influence a lot of other people. So we need people that are in strategic positions, positions of influence, not only in government, but in society. Uh, in the media, who will be strong as believers and unflinching in the face of opposition. Um, Many of the forms of media are in the hands of ungodly people who try to suppress the voice of God. uh, And that's all part of the battle with which we're engaged. But it's a battle that's got to be undertaken in prayer as, as well as in people being involved in, in the media, in entertainment, in sport, and so on. Um, but of course, the more we are submitted to God, the more authority we will have in our praying. And um, this is something that every Christian has got to realize. I think there's a lot of people that will say, well, I don't get answers to my prayers in the way that I would like. Uh, I just don't feel that my prayer is as effective as it ought to be. And I think the answer to that is very often, I wouldn't say always, but very often it's because those believers are not sufficiently submitted to the Lord in their in the outworking of their daily lives. Because as we've been seeing all through these last two weeks, the more we are under authority, the more we can express the Lord's authority in our lives. So, you know, we want people that are going to have influence because they can speak with real authority, because they are so submitted to the Lord. 
um, in their own personal lives. So it all comes down to spirituality, really, doesn't it? Well, it does. And, you know, um, uh, I've said during these two weeks that we teach our church about authority because it's such an important subject and teach our Bible school students likewise. But for me, um, this is the greatest challenge in my life because God has given me apostolic authority, which is the greatest authority that he can put spiritually in the hands of a person. Uh, that doesn't mean I go around saying, I'm a personal authority, you've got to do what I say. I mean, all that's nonsense, that kind of attitude. No, what I recognize is that I've got to stay so close to the Lord. I've got to stay so submitted to the Lord, so sensitive to the voice of his spirit. And, um, you know, it's not something that I often talk about, but I was speaking to a church just uh, three days ago uh, about this, about what it really means to to be an apostle. And I was saying that the most difficult thing is not the opposition that you get, because if you represent God's authority, you're always going to get opposition. We talked about Moses the other day, and of course Jesus, although he was the son of God, constant, constant opposition to his authority from the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and so on. And Paul and the other apostles. You know, Paul says, uh, I think we apostles are like the prisoners at the end of the procession, of the procession that are doomed to die in the arena. Um, you know, the way that people treat us. But actually, that is not the most difficult thing for me. The most, the most difficult thing is to know that you've got to be so close to God that however people are treating you, they are treating the Lord. Um, God said to me years ago when I was sort of first learning how to exercise all this authority, he said, Colin, people will treat you in the same way that they treated me because you represent my authority, that whatever they do to you, they're doing to me. So don't take it personally. Just recognize their real problem. It's not with you, it's with me, because you represent my authority. And therefore, the most difficult thing is because you, you have to stay so close to the Lord and you have to be so sensitive to the Spirit, you see things that other people don't see. You have a spiritual perception that other people don't have. And you can see and discern what is going on in a situation in a way that other people are blind to. That's the most difficult thing. It really is the most difficult thing. Because, you see, I, I can understand Paul's frustration, where he was often having to say to the churches that he was writing to, I want you to acknowledge and respect my authority as an apostle. Because he could see and he could perceive what was going on in a way that the local leadership couldn't and in a way that the people couldn't. And he would ha often have opposition from people in the churches to what he was saying. Even though he was perceiving clearly what God was saying, he was perceiving what the Spirit was saying, he was bringing the word of the Lord. And what the people were doing, you see, was not just rejecting him, but they were rejecting the word that he brought from the Lord. And that that is the most difficult thing. When you know um, that you are bringing things from God, you know that, and yet the people, wherever you are, are not responding or are rejecting because what they're actually doing is rejecting the Lord. They're rejecting the word of the Lord. They're rejecting the leading of the Spirit. And sometimes when you're in apostolic leadership like that, you're going right against the flow because, you know, certain things become popular. They're the latest thing. They're the latest fashion. And often, you know, it's not good. People are just running after something that is not good. You know it appears to be good, but you know it's not good. And, and you have to sort of stand out against this and against the flow. And people say, oh, what's the matter with you? Aren't you with it? Don't you understand? And then the whole thing falls apart and, and people say nothing. They don't say, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry you were right all along. You're not looking for that. But you see, this is, this is part of, of uh, being in that kind of authority that 
you have to stand by the truth that you are responsible for keeping everybody walking in the truth and you're going to be responsible to God for the way in which you've done that. It's very uncompromising, isn't it? It's, it's totally uncompromising. And the, if you like, the higher up the, the um, authority ladder you are spiritually, the less compromising you will be. You just cannot compromise at all. And I guess that's true in the workplace also. The Christian cannot compromise in the workplace. Well, it should be true all the way, you know, wherever we are witnesses for God that we will not compromise. But, um, uh, you know, it, 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 but I was using compromise in a slightly different way there. You can't compromise um, as to the will of God, the word of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you're in spiritual leadership, you, you just cannot, you just dare not compromise. And, you know, Paul said, if I was still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. And that's where the compromise comes in very often. It's in a desire to please men in order to be popular and so really compromise your submission to God, to his word, to his spirit, and to what God is saying and doing at that time. So, in order to exercise all this wonderful authority that God has given us that we were talking about at the beginning of last week, we need to be those who are so submitted to the Lord. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he will exalt you. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 